This is Super Yacht News with Yves Sisman. Hi, welcome back to the channel. So the German multimillionaire Lars Windhorst is having what seems to be a bit of a fire sale. Uh, last year, he sold his football team, Hertha BSC, German football team, and now he's put his 74 meter super yacht motor yacht global up for sale for what appears to be a cut price now before you start reaching for your checkbook uh do they still have checkbooks i don't know but anyway before you start reaching for it the price is not exactly cheap uh his yacht is for sale with iyc the international yacht company for the bargain price of 79 million euros which is about uh 85 million dollars However, the yacht was valued just last year at $115 million. So that's a $30 million price reduction. Now that's a lot, even for a billionaire. Lars Windhorst, if you don't know, is an investor and co-founder of Sapinda Group, but he's best known for being the owner of the fashion company La Perla. He has over the years filed for bankruptcy a number of times, not personally, but through his companies but always seemingly rebuilt his fortune back up to his company's re reporting values recently of $3.5 billion. Now his personal assets are said to be worth uh, around 800 million euros. According to the German website Build, Windhorst has often found himself in what they said di called difficult waters uh, with risky deals. And most recently with the FSG Nobuskrug shipyards, which Windhorst took over in 2019, Nobus Krug is the shipyard that built Sailing Yacht A, by the way. Now, the Kiel Public Prosecutor's Office is investigating the company on suspicion of withholding or embezzling wages, and the German Navy also withdrew an order from there to repair equipment on their behalf. His most recent bankruptcy was in Hanover in Germany, where he bought a high-rise block of apartments that he purchased five years ago. It's believed he invested over 130 million euros, including the purchase price of the building. But Windhaus has left the building and his subsidiary filed for bankruptcy in late autumn last year. Now the yacht is a 74 meter or 243 foot in length and it was built by Lursen in 2007. It has a top speed of 16 knots and a range of 5,000 nautical miles. The yacht was originally named Kismet and was owned by the Pakistani-American billionaire Shahid Khan. Khan has since upgraded twice to much larger yachts. A global can carry 12 guests and has a crew of about 24. It has a steel hull, a helicopter, landing deck, and the yacht was refitted this year in 2024. You can find it on the IYC uh, website, by the way, for sale, as I said. And you can see a brochure of the, of the yacht there as well. Uh, we'll move on to our next story. Um, this is about uh, Royal Romance. The Ukrainian government is officially selling super yacht Royal Romance. The division of the Ukrainian government named Armour, which we've mentioned before, has officially announced they're looking for a seller to oversee the sale of the yacht once owned by the Russian ally, but Ukrainian, uh, Viktor Medvedchuk. In a statement, Armour said that the commission of the competitive selection of legal entities that sells these assets took place. And in relation to the yacht of the collaborator, Victor Medvedchuk, this is this statement, Victor Medvedchuk's yacht Royal Romance, which is located in the port of the Croatian city of Trogir. It was actually seized in Croatia. And they said, for the first time in the history of Ukraine and the practice of armor, competition for the sale of the seized assets, which that is currently abroad, has been launched. Now, we mentioned this in a previous video that it's the first time, in, like they said, in, in the history of Ukraine that they've actually seized something, but it's not being repatriated to the country for obvious reasons. Anyway, the commissioner member uh, Stanislav Petrov said that it's important that Armour has officially received documents from the Croatian law enforcement and judicial authorities regarding the absence of any other encumbrances, uh, restrictions or civil law agreements that could prevent Armour from realising this asset. In other words, there's no restrictions, liens, etc. Uh, to selling the yacht. Uh, Armour has stipulated certain rules for any companies that wish to be involved in the sale and they are basically and the beneficial owners of the, any companies that apply cannot be Russian or Belarusian. Um, and they also call them the aggressor countries cannot be involved. Uh, the winner of the competition to find a, a seller will be determined uh, in April on the 23rd. 
Now, whenever we talk about the seizure of yachts, we always get the same comments in the comment section. This is theft or it's piracy, etc. So before you type it, I'm sure you still type it, the people who do, because we know where they're coming from. But here's a quick resume of Viktor Medvedchuk. Medvedchuk was once a lawyer in Ukraine and a former politician. In 2014, the United States placed Medvedchuk on the sanctions list to punish him for his alleged role during the 2014 Russian annexation of Crimea. Remember, he's Ukrainian. In February 2021, Medvedchuk and his wife, Oksana Marchenko, a once TV personality in Ukraine, were added to Ukrainian sanctions lists for alleged financing of terrorism. In May 2021, the Prosecutor General of Ukraine accused Medvedchuk of treason and attempted looting of national resources in Crimea, which had been annexed by Russia but remains internationally recognized as Ukrainian. He was placed under house arrest pending trial, and Medvedchuk escaped house arrest on the 28th of February 2022, uh, four days after the invasion of Ukraine by Russia, and he went on the run. In the, on the 12th of April 2022, Medvedchuk was arrested by the security services of Ukraine, and in September 2022, Medvedchuk, together with 55 Russian prisoners of war, was exchanged with Russia for 215 Ukrainian prisoners of war from the siege of Mariupol. He now lives in exile in Russia. Uh, another thing to note on there is that the godfather of his children is Vladimir Putin. Make of that what you will. Okay, we'll move on to our next story now. And we've got another yacht sailing through the Red Sea uh, to pass through into Suez Canal. Extremely dangerous time to be transiting this area. They're broadcasting that they are not connected to the Israelis, as we've noticed on past videos of other yachts doing the same thing. On the AIS broadcast includes the words, no Israeli association. Now the vessel which is sailing from Oman to Suez and beyond obviously, is believed to be owned by Omar al Futam from the UAE. So most likely there is no connection with Israel. Now, not sure if that would be persuasive to those firing missiles at passing vessels, though. Uh, of course, you will know that the Houthis, uh, fighters, and the Yemen militia have been firing missiles and attacking vessels passing through these areas since the Israeli-Palestinian conflict has been going on. Actually sank a vessel recently. It was a, a commercial vessel. Not to mention, since those hostilities started in, with Israel and Palestine, Somali pirates' activities have flared up again as military vessels that were patrolling the Gulf of Aden, where the Somali pirates used to operate, they've been diverted to the Red Sea to help protect shipping there. And now the Somali pirates have started to um, attack ships again. Hopefully this yacht makes it with no issues, but I would have thought that all yachts would be avoiding this area until things settle down. I mean, it's not like they're delivering important aid somewhere or something, is it? It's a super yacht after all. Anyway, we'll move on to our next story. Uh, the Isisman Super Yacht's best new super yacht of 2023, Liver O, has arrived in San Diego a few days ago, actually, now. The yacht has it's been all over the West Coast after transiting the Panama Canal, which we showed you pictures of at the time. It, it visited Cabo San Lucas, as you can see in these photos here, from a subscriber in Mexico. We've also had uh, some photographs sent in from various other places and from San Diego. However, the yacht arrived on live webcam in San Diego via the San Diego webcam on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description so you can go and check it out. They've got videos from all different things. They also covered Motia Amadea arriving uh, when, it, when it was seized by the US government. The Live at O is a 118 meter or 387 foot super yacht built by Abiking Rasmussen in Germany and delivered in 2023. This is the largest yacht ever contracted, uh, ever built by Aberking and Rasmussen. Stunning looking yacht with the black hole. Looks like a classic ship, but brand new at the same time. I think it's a stunning vessel. Let us know what you think of the yacht in the comments. All right, guys, remember to check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash sysman. If you want to support the channel, this is a great way to do it. You'll find many videos not featured on YouTube, including the Atlantic vlog series and the Patreon chat series. We'll talk about topical things in the Patreon chat series, such as the, the uh, Baltimore ship crashing into the bridge there. We've got a 30 minute video on there about that. And we've posted some uh, other videos on there recently as well. You'll get behind the scenes footage from our trips to Super Yacht Marinas all over the world. New trips coming very soon.
All right, guys, if you've got any information for us about any of these stories or any other stories, please be sure to get in touch. You can get us in the email address in the ticker. You can get us on the About page of the YouTube channel. Get us on Instagram, Facebook Messenger, on Twitter, and on Threema. Please be sure to like this video, very important for the algorithm. Hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for future notifications. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch up with you soon. Bye-bye.